So um, you have to stay with me uh, a little bit longer, um, but uh, Alex will join me. So it's it's Alex squared, and I I already <laughs> saw see some saw some faces that uh, were in Hano at the Bitcom Summit, and uh, we were supposed to do that, but um, Alex got sick. So now we have to, you really have the chance to um, <laughs> to see what what the presentation should really have been like um, together. Um, yeah, super excited. So um, what's it about? Um, so I did some projects uh, with Alexander Tam. Um, Alex has been with Volkswagen, with Gardner, um, PhD in Cambridge, and so forth. And we thought, well, we, we, we see a lot of the same problems, right? We already talked about we want to learn from each other. We want to um, share about things that didn't work, um, that we can grow as, as, as ourselves. But also, I uh, think for us, it's, it's a little bit important that we finally catch up at least a little bit um, uh, to China, to the US, and so forth. And um, I think we can just, or we have a bigger chance in, in achieving this if we really work together. And uh, of course, you cannot share everything, that's right. But um, what, what Alex prepared uh, is, is uh, like 10 key principles, um, how, how we think we could improve what we do and how we could yeah. better leverage data um, and take a larger benefit from that. And uh, I guess the, the, the nice little history was I, I wrote a blog article uh, a while ago and then we started debating those points and I think it's, it's really interesting when you get another perspective on it and start you know, discussing the points and so this will be the result of it. And just to, 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 to give you an understanding of the angle we're looking at it, it's, it's really, you know, if you're already a completely digital company and, you know, and, and you, you, know, you, you were born after 2010 or after 2005 when big data was already sort of there, uh, and then it's a completely different thing. You start building data products. But if you're not, if you're a pre-2000 company, then you really need to change a lot of things besides building data products. And this is really what the presentation is about. Yeah. So that's us. You know this already. Um, rule number one. Right. So I think the toughest thing to realize is that actually if you're tasked with digitization, with digital transformation in a, in a pre-2000 company, you're sort of screwed. Because you're put into a big dilemma. And if you, if you look at it, I mean, uh, Germany has started to, to digitize maybe two, two or three years ago. Um, and, and, and we are all on the journey. And, and how many chief digital officers are truly successful? How many digital officers have really fun at their job every day? No, it's, it's a battle every day. And, and why is it so? Because there's a big dilemma in this job. You have to basically do something and be successful at it. At the same time, you have to change what the people are doing and how they are doing it in such companies that are more traditional. So you basically change the DNA of the company, change why people are there. You know, there, people are attracted to a company out of a reason uh, because they, they really like to build cars, they really like trains. They don't come there because they, they like data usually, you know, in, in such companies. So you start to change the company they love. Uh, and not everyone loves you about it, and they, they are not always sure if what you, what you do benefits them or not. And the key dilemma in this is that you can do two things. Either you really focus on a lot of showcases, and that's sort of happy honeymoon, because for a while you, you, you show the big potential, you know, you show there are millions and billions of dollars of potentials out there to transform your company, to have better customer relationships, to drive uh, revenue through, through better marketing, to, to have better operational efficiency. But you do it in a lab environment here over there. And, and after a while people ask you, okay, are you getting out of this lab? Knock, knock. Do you, are you bringing it to the company or not? So for a while, it, it's sort of a safe way of doing digital transformation. But after a while, you have to get out of your room there and out of your lab. Um, but then the big dilemma starts on the other side, because uh, you, you promised this huge potential. And now you have to get it out on the street to the core of the company. And this is where you have an environment that is really hostile to all your products that you built. So it takes a lot of time to actually change the ground where you want to put the data products on uh, or any digital products on. Uh, and you have to do a lot of change management and takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. And it's not what your executives actually 
uh, perceive as the way to go from the media because the media shows you all these great use cases, all the conference where we go to just success case after success case. But if you look at the small prints, it's usually the business potential. It's not the realized business, uh, business uh, uh, revenue or the realized cost saving um, or, or maybe just in a small pilot, you know, pilot scope. And this, this is really the tough bit. And how, how do we do it? I think it's, 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 it's really, really difficult. But I think at the end, it's a balancing, it's a storytelling act where you do some showcase to show there is potential, but you also have to, from the front, say, from the beginning, say, look, this is a, just the potential. It will be a tough way to realize it. And we need a lot of commitment, a lot of time commitment, a lot of executive attention on it to really make the changes. Um, and, and, and this is tough because you have to be brutally honest about how, how hard it is uh, to, to, to bring that into work and how much support you would need. Yep. <coughs> yeah, and I think the, like the, I think the second rule can be derived a little bit by the first rule that um, uh, on, on the one hand, well, we, we, we both, I think, don't believe that um, this digital disruption in, in, in Germany from, from the economy just being, um, yeah, let's say, um, leveraged by just new companies, by just startups, that this can really work. We have cool companies like Zalando um, that prove it, it can work, but still I think we don't really have the, the investment infrastructure so far that we can rely on just startups. So we think that our traditional companies, be it the DAX companies, the large companies, um, by the way, this, I think this, this is also um, for whole Europe, not just for Germany. And um, the, the Mittelstand, the medium-sized companies, um, I think with them we cannot make it. So we have to um, transform them. But if we just tell them, well, you know what, um, AI is going to take your job and tomorrow a robot is going to do your work, um, especially on the little bit more traditional employees, this doesn't resonate well, right? So, but on the other hand, if you if you don't push them a little bit, and if you don't, um, yeah, show them use cases, you show them that it works, you show them that I don't know they don't have to do this Excel analysis, analysis every day anymore, so they can actually go uh, to see their kids uh, one hour earlier on Friday. And this is something they understand, right? So. But um, that means that some of the, the basic beliefs also are changing. And, and you had this great example from, uh, yeah, from the automotive industry um, uh, where you said, well, I mean, now we, our KPIs are driven by sales. They're driven by uh, how much dealerships have we out there, how much revenue are they making. But um, as maybe also a Volkswagen is becoming more like a, yeah, a platform or a, a digital company, there might be new KPIs to track, right? Yeah, I mean, for, for, for 30, 40 years, you, you have the same KPIs. You look at how effective your dealers are. You ho look at how, how many cars you produce. But suddenly, you know, it's all changed. You start selling cars online. You start um, having... Um, having services added, uh, adding revenue and, 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 and much more profit than often the hardware, you know, on top of it, uh, that are more digital driven. Uh, but it's not, it's not in the, all the processes how you evaluate people. Uh, it's really changing, it's, it's changing the whole paradigm of, of looking at the business. So you might have, Alex might come to you and, and have a really cool use case and say, hey, this is really cool, it drives really customer experience. And, and people would sort of not, yeah, customer experience, cool but it's, it's not really put into the targets and it's not really measured. It's really difficult right now. Yeah. So you really have to change, have the discussions uh, on, on how the business is changing uh, and how, how you have to evaluate and look at business, what business success yeah. means. Uh, uh, all, all of you, I mean, what the Germans do really well is that we, we calculate this return on investment, right? So we say, well, if we do a project, it has to bring five to 10 times um, uh, back the money that we invested. And please, qu quickly, right? In the f first year, first half year, maybe two years. But then if you look at other companies like Amazon, for, or Zalando, how long they invested until really getting the big game, that's, that's a really different thinking. And um, I think this is something that we, that one use case might not um, be enough business case to, to leverage or to, to pay for a data lake. Mm. But 
all the stuff that you can do if you do that right. Yeah. Um, but then like, who's going to pay for that, right? And yeah. So, but why is that really important? Um, you came up with this, with this formula, I think. This it's, is the it's magic cool. formula. From my opinion, <laughs> my opinion, this is the magic formula for any data scientist and any peop uh, guy in the data profession. And yeah, it, has, it has two, two meanings. So digital equals data plus x. Very simple equation. Sort of uh, for dummies equation, you could say. But if you think about it, it means two things. One is, if you want to digitize your company, you need data and you need analytics for it. You think this is something we all know. Yeah, maybe. But most guys in the business, in the more traditional side, they say, just make this industry 4.0. Just make this connected. Just make, give me customer experience. They have no clue that there is data analytics behind it, maybe 80% in the background, very well hidden, but it's basically the main component uh, of, of, of what they want to digitize. And that you need a lot of investment in the data lake, in the backbone. They, they don't connect that to, to all the cool stuff that they want. So that's one way of reading the equation. The other way, and uh, Alex knows that from his uh, own experience with working with companies, and looking at this equation is digital equals data plus X, and you better control the X if you're in data. Because if you don't control the X, you can do as much algorithms as you want, and nobody cares. <laughs> and I give you an example. Or Maybe you can give me an example. Yeah, well, I mean, this is um, when we hire uh, new colleagues from university, uh, PhDs or, or master, whatever, or even smart programmers, they all, most of them think that data science is about machine learning, right? So it's like you do deep learning all the time. That's, that's like... Uh, and then we say, well, hmm, maybe not, because then you have to talk to the business and then you have to understand what the data really means and what, how it's generated, and then you have this period of data preparation that takes you mostly all the time. And then maybe you can do some cool models and then hopefully if you are, for example, in the manufacturing business, they, the engineers always want to understand how the models work because they want to kind of trust them. So, so it, it's, a tough, it's a tough bit. And, and so if, if you, um, so the problem, it's, it's really hard as a data scientist, at least in our experience, and I would love to have a discussion about this, um, to generate value by your own. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we discussed this uh, yesterday yeah. night uh, on on a, on a fireplace, uh, um, and and we said, well, um, well, you have the algorithm, <laughs> and uh, let's say you have a better algorithm to give a recommendation on the web. I did that with my team, and then uh, the web guys didn't want to implement the website because it doesn't fit into the pipeline. So half a year of work, of work we had uh, two PhDs uh, and a postdoc basically sort of working on it, and uh, it was one of the best arguments to solve the problem, but it was never implemented. It, it's still in the pipeline, you know, for a year now. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is the X, you know, and you yeah. better control the damn X. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you, you cannot show success as a, as a data unit. It feels like if you it feels like you are the, you are, I don't know Robinson I would say some conqueror I don't know um, yeah. yeah let's say uh, yeah some some guy who uh, conquers countries and he finds cinnamon for example yeah he's the first person to discover cinnamon somewhere on an exotic island I don't know where cinnamon actually yeah. comes from but um, and then he says <laughs> well, we have this <laughs> great new spice so we can put this new spice in all different types of meals and all the meals are going to be great but have you ever tasted pure cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe it's it's not a, a meal by itself, right? So so the challenge is, um, I, I, sometimes we feel like the, the guys yeah. producing the cinnamon, and and now you need all the others to make a nice cake out of it, or to put it in I don't know a tea or um, so this is or a biscuit or whatever. So yeah. um, so what what can you do actually about it? I think you have to educate those people, and um, until everybody understands the value of data, and uh, in each business unit there will be someone who's kind of capable of doing data science, like you now have this Excel guy that you always go to because he knows VBA programming and... Uh, you, you know what I think? I think we, we should look at data as products, you know, and from the beginning say a data product is this algorithm plus this thing on the website, you know, and don't be only responsible for the small bit, but also remaining communicate this is the whole product that we need to deliver. And this is the way, you know, you set the expectations. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Yeah, um, 
talking about knowledge and having one guy in each department, um, there's obviously still a lack of data scientists. By the way, the lack for data engineers is much worse. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you already recognized. Um, but still, I mean, um, what we find is that to leverage data into this X and create a, a customer centric product that people are using, the business knowledge, the domain knowledge is really important. So you can either teach the data scientists to understand the business, but what you can also do is to take a business analyst, a controller, an actuarian, uh, a quality Six Sigma guy, and teach them a little bit about machine learning and teach them a little bit about um, data visualization. And, and maybe he might not be the best data scientist then out there, maybe not the best uh, guy to tune your neural network, but um, yeah, he, he might be capable of, of just doing stuff and leveraging what um, the, the, the super um, uh, smart data science guys are doing in your company. So, and I think this is a really big lever um, to, yeah, to get more value out of data. And, and uh, the, the funny thing is you wouldn't uh, realize that this is one of the most important things you have to do as a data function. Train everyone. Train the executives to understand what data products are. Train the workforce so they can work with you on those data products from the business side. And train people so, uh, so they can become data scientists so you don't have to hire everyone from the market and they have already some company process know-how which is very, very, very valuable. Um, and, and, and when I talk to, to my peers, uh, you know, running, running data function in other companies, they, they all admit that, you know, it's, it's tra training is maybe the most useful thing we do. Uh, and it's not about building data products, but it's about training, which makes really the, the change in the company that drives the change. And by the way, we have run a big program with Alex uh, and his team uh, in our company. And, and, and it's, we, we really got consistently really, really good feedback that this is the right thing to do. In general, you know, when you look at all our data activities, this was the most valued activity that we, we've been doing. So, so I, can, I can really say, uh, uh, you know, from, from a practical uh, point of view, this really works, you know, giving your employees the chance to really engage with yeah. you to build stuff. Because they, they, if, if you, you know, imagine you are in a company and you have, you work there for 30 years, you really work your ass off, um, you work late hours and then someone comes and says, yeah, we built up this new fancy department. It's somewhere in the Silicon Valley. Nobody knows where and you may not go there um, because they do private, like, crazy stuff. And then, uh, I mean, and, and you, you're, you're really cut out of that, right? You say, well, and now maybe they're even right. Maybe this 30 years I invested of my life, it's, it's not worth anything anymore. There's this yeah. algorithms coming and, and so, so they threaten me. So that's, that's, I think, a natural reaction, right? So, so the thing is to really educate them and show them, you know what, hey, this is, uh, you can play with it. Here, try it out. It's not, it's not bad. It's not biting you. Yeah? You, can, yeah. you can do some things. Uh, and uh, yeah, and there's also um, yeah, use fun. cases, examples in Germany or in Europe where people do stuff that actually works. And, and I think this is where you catch people and say, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not so bad. And they can participate. And, and I think this is the soft part of, uh, of data science, you know, really the change management. Um, and and there's, there's a hard side to data transformation that goes beyond data science. And if you click on the next slide, it will appear, which is, which is really putting up committees that deal with data analytics uh, on a high level, you know, under the board. Uh, this, this is really a key learning. If you don't have it, it's really, really tough. Why is it tough? Because most data topics cross, cross functions. You know, you in production maybe need the data from development or the, f the sales and marketing needs data from quality management to do something. And maybe you need their joint investment in data lake. Nobody would pay it for it uh, by, by themselves. You know, Maybe the data quality of, of this department over there sucks and it destroys everything you do uh, in, in, in your data product. And, and my experience was if you don't have a cross-functional steering body for, for, uh, that, that takes care of data analytics, it doesn't have to be a pure data analytics body, it can be a digital council or something, but it needs to be re really with top managers. And if you don't have commitment there, you always need to go to the board because transformation means you're changing the company. So you need always the executive commitment to make those changes and the mandate. 
Um, and, and so if you want to avoid to go for small things around, okay, we want to do a custom ID, we want to uh, standardize our customer data, if you want to avoid to go to the board every time with technical questions, you need to have something uh, as a, as a pre-layer to the board that can make quick decisions um, and help you to drive the transformation and give you the mandate as a data function and also the in the business function to do things because there's a lot of attitude that you can't do anything and, and, and you really need a strong mandate that you're allowed to do the things with data that, that bring value. And yeah. that leads us to a very, very important next question that, uh, uh, and, and uh, maybe the <coughs> biggest task for this board, which is? <laughs> yeah, um, um, this board thing is a little bit tough, but um, I mean, in a really large company, um, I think you need a, like different hierarchy levels in a maybe not so large company. You still need someone who is accountable um, to actually free your data and make them available um, for all the people to use, obviously uh, um, staying in the privacy and the regulations. And then I know, yeah, we can talk about GDPR. Um, so um, obviously this is something we have to handle. I think most of us are actually not so much doing that. We just wait now until May and then we see what happens. Um, let's see how that goes. But I also see it as a great opportunity because everybody now is kind of forced to tidy up the basement, right? So everybody now um, has to check, well, what are we actually storing and why are we actually using data? So I think why some of the data lake, or maybe most, I don't know, projects failed um, in the beginning was because somebody had the idea, well, let's just collect everything and then it's going to be good. Yeah, we have it like, like, a, uh, uh, like a squirrel or a hamster um, before the winter. Yeah, it's a good thing. Uh, we don't know what to do with that. But then as people wanted to do use cases on that, um, they found, well, uh, the data is there. So we have, for example, the, with the web shop, yeah, we have um, analytical data on the website, but we didn't pay for the Google Analytics Premium account, so we don't have it on, on, a, on a, a detailed basis that we can actually address on a cookie basis or even on a customer ID basis. So basically, um, we can just do overall descriptive analytics about the visits and stuff like this. So, so once it was, it was freed, okay, but once um, people wanted to use it, um, they found that um, the knowledge about the data was not really shared and um, that it was not described and it was actually not corrected, correctly collected. And, and that, that's our rule number seven. And um, uh, if you think about it, you know, uh, GDPR is a great opportunity to, to start collecting knowledge on our data. Um, I don't know how it is in your company, but in our companies, uh, it's really, uh, we discovered uh, with GDPR that we don't know much about our data. We don't know really where it is. We don't know what's, what's inside the data. Uh, and, and when I talk to other, you know, German companies and European companies, they all have the same problem. Um, and, and, and the funny thing is that I talked to Amazon guys and they also said that GDPR is a big, big task for them and it's not easy. So if it's even difficult for digital players, you know, how difficult is it for traditional players with lots of, you know, operating 200 markets and you have all these siloed little databases and then you have to start discovering what, what's inside those databases. But it's a big opportunity because if you start data building data products, you always need to find out what, what does this data mean, even if you get access. And by the way, uh, uh, we we had cases where people waited for over a year to get access to data or never got it. Um, so, uh, and, and this is not untypical, you know, in, in many companies the problem is that for some data you, you need to, you just don't get it. Out of political reasons you just don't get it. People see it as their asset and they want to protect it. But once you free it up, it doesn't mean that you automatically can use it because it's very local data usually, it's with local processes. So you need to understand the local processes to understand the data. So you need to talk to a lot of people and it takes a lot of time to make sense, make meaning out of the data. And if you've done that, I think it would be cruel not to document that uh, so others who want to use that data afterwards can, can reuse it. Because they otherwise they have to, d and again, the process of two months research of what this data means, um, and, and it's all over again. And, and if you're a big company, this happens 100 times, 1,000 times, 100,000 times, 
all over again, everyone has to find out. And of course, the guys who are the, the data subject matter experts become very uh, displeased by the millions of requests they get and they stop engaging. So, so I think it's, it's a must that we start sharing our knowledge on data. And that's, it's one of the first principles when you build data products that this is part of a data product to share the insights uh, that you generated. Yeah. So very important rule. Very important rule, and uh, also this guy. Um, uh, I, I once saw a, um, a picture on the internet where um, there was the job descriptions in the data space, like data scientists, and then there was the actual translation on what you do every day. <laughs> and data scientist became the data waiter. Um, so um, yeah, automating your data preparation is definitely something that makes sense because you might think you do this once, but then new data comes in or somebody finds out there was a mistake in the data nobody knew before and so forth. So um, yeah, and what does it mean? It means you should maybe rather use Python than R. So that's how it boils down. I mean, this is now uh, maybe a little bit of a bold statement and uh, some, <laughs> some colleagues might throw stones, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but what we see is that as mm. data use cases are getting more um, into production, are getting more into uh, finally being leveraged, um, it's really important that you build a PUC that there's some stuff you can actually use on the final factorized product or industrialized product. Alex, you had a great example last night on our fire camp talk about, um, I think you had a client where you had to do reports all the time and every month and you said that, you know, after a while you just figured out, okay, we can automate 80, 90% of that request um, and, 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 you know, just press yeah. the button. And yeah, sure. I mean, this it's data, leveraging data doesn't always have to be the recommender engine or the neural network or the face recognition, whatever. It can also be that you improve your processes in IT, that you reduce costs. Uh, cost due to, I don't know, licenses or due to um, dragging data through a lot of different systems that have actually grown over the years. Um, I think for one insurance, the biggest use case of leveraging data was actually to automating their data pipelines and yeah. reducing a lot of labor costs and license costs throughout the whole um, insurance group. I think, I think a key <coughs> thing here is actually for, for, for this rule is uh, that we have to, it's, it's like a bar that we fill with, with new liquids, you know, that you can use as your uh, ingredients for any other data product. And we have to fill slowly the bar and have somewhere to fill it. Uh, so once you have a good, something that everyone uses, let's say uh, uh, a customer profile, a customer lifetime value, a customer retention score, something that everyone needs, you put it inside and everyone can use it. For you, maybe it's a side product that you need in between as calculation to say, uh, am I sending an email or not? You know, do I target this customer? But for somebody else, it's also a convenient for a different algorithm. So start sharing those elements and think about components, you know, and, and, and think about data products and components will be a key next step to mature our, our profession, uh, I strongly believe. Yeah. Yeah, we have to go a little bit quick. Uh, we could <laughs> keep talking forever. Um, well, this is obvious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's an easy one. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. so I know. I, in, in my opinion, you know, uh, a while ago I would say, okay, um, probably on premise is easier and faster. But now I would say that, you know, I, I strong start to believe that cloud first should be the way to go. You know, wherever you build new applications, try to build on a cloud, try to get the a safe environment in the, in the even in the public cloud you can do that even as a, as a public company where where you have the servers in Europe where it's all the protocols that you need where it's it applies to banking regulations to 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 uh, GDPR to everything and once you have it just start putting even in-house data into that environment because the rate of innovation is too fast your your the, the internal IT systems cannot follow in in, in big data analytics and uh, and data science it just doesn't work so so cloud first I'm, I'm a strong believer now even in a corporate environment um, AI first I think that is that is also an, a very interesting point you know wherever you start thinking about apps why don't you do it over voice and and and, and natural uh, language um, instead of just touch or, or click I think I think that's also a good way on looking at data products. It's not that difficult today anymore. And then and then of course um, open source. I think you know if you look at the rate of innovation, I think 
products that contain open source components are the more innovative products today in most cases in the data science discipline. Doesn't mean that you have to always go for a free version. I think there are a lot of commercial packages that are really good, uh, but but I think you know. Uh, um, really, really, you know, um, those software tools that that uh, are created by the open source community have a, a strategic edge, you know, a, a more innovative edge. And of course, you need to look how mature they are for 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 your usage. Uh, like with Spark, you know, there's a has been a lot of problems in production, but they slowly get resolved. And as you have more and more commercial uh, versions of it, it becomes better. Yeah, I mean, maybe just one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's really interesting what's happening to Apple right now. Um, obviously, yeah. this is a discussion, but um, uh, so they started with Siri. Maybe they were at least percept, percepted, perceived in, in Germany, the first ones to have an AI assistant that everybody could use. But now, uh, to my mind, Alexa works much better than, than Siri. So the question is, why is that? Is it because of the closed software ecosystem of Apple that they didn't open source um, some of their IP? I don't know. I think that's also a really good discussion um, that we can do later as we have to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Final so what, point. Yeah. So, what, what does it mean? I mean, uh, what, uh, it's not easy. Yeah, that, that was actually the first rule, uh, but maybe you already knew that. Um, uh, but how can you... How can you I think it, it, the, the process of um, becoming better, more mature, more capable to use data and generate value is, it's not a linear road. I think this is really something you have to um, accept. It's really you push a little bit here, you do another use case, you get some senior executive or some critical colleague to believe it's going to work. Then you have to push a little bit on the technology side and say, well, okay, you know what, now uh, uh, we can have a business case to expand our data lake. Then um, um, you can get maybe a training in and say, well, you know what, we now train, do a foundation class on everybody. And, and this is how you push on the, on the strategic side, on the, on the, let's say, lab side, on the POC and prototype side, and on the factory industrialization side. So you, you basically are pushing, and it's really you have to maneuver through all the hurdles and through all the... Yeah, the bombs that are going up, and and we also see um, the the average lifetime of a chief data officer or a CUE <laughs> owner is I don't know a year or something, very one and a half. Yeah, very short lifespan. Very short lifespan. Uh, um, so yeah, it, it's not an easy task, but the things you can accomplish, I think, are really great. And and I think it's not just that it's a cool accomplishment for your career. I think it's also almost a duty. Yeah, um, uh, that we don't really. To, to say the word fuck up <laughs> in here with our companies because I think the the threat and also the opportunity but also the threat is it's much larger than than most of us actually are yeah. are, are thinking and and I think you know the, the key the key thing about about the, the, the last thing you know the balancing act between transformation and innovation is really you have to have those cool new use cases but you need to clean your data and, and and improve your data foundation and and that, that's that's what our our uh, most advanced uh, brand and digital uh, transformation is Scania, you know, and the CEO always says, let's clean our data with our use cases. Let's see where the, you know, where, how the data is and improve it to drive real business value. And I think that's, that's really something that, that, that is, is a very good way of looking at things. So, so here we are, 10 rules um, that, that w we came up. Probably there are two or three or five or 10 other rules that are important, but those are the 10 rules that, you know, besides building great data products is, is I think, really uh, something that can help to look on your job from a bit different perspective and really go through those points and look at, okay, how, how can I make this work better? And of course, applying it in your environment is, 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 is always needs some contextualization. Uh, you cannot always apply it one-to-one, -one, but I think you can use it as a pattern, you know, that, 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 that helps you to look at the problem a bit different. Yeah. So thanks, everybody. Thanks again for being here. Um, have a great time. If there are any questions, don't hesitate to talk to each other, talk to us, and have a good discussion. Squeeze as much out of those two days as you can possibly manage. And um, yeah, thanks again for listening. Thanks. Have a great time.